Consider all the worlds our hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior.
with shouts of acclamation and take me home. Well, good day. Welcome to Father's Day 2020. Thank you, you could be with us this morning. And uh, what a week it's been. The good, the bad and the ugly. But anyway, here we are and um, praise God, we're all alive and well. And God has been good. You know, this morning, it's Father's Day. And I guess we're not all fathers. Some are uncles, some are aunties, some are grandfathers, some are mothers, but it's, a, it's still a great time to gather around and to appreciate what God has done in our families, how God has been so faithful. He is the faithful one. You know, sometimes we forget on Father's Day that we have a heavenly Father that has been so good to us. And as we look back over the years, we can say, yes, God has been so faithful. But you know, he continues to be faithful. And as we go forward, we want to think about this Father's Day, maybe about your dad, maybe about some of the things that are precious to you that your dad has been to you. Others may not have been so fortunate. Maybe you've had a bad experience with men or fathers but you know that was never God's plan and you know one of the great things about this is he always takes that place and unless he is number one it's very hard to put the rest of the jigsaw puzzle back together and so this morning I'm going to read uh, from Luke chapter 2 and verse 49. Because in order to see the, the ultimate father, we have to see how Jesus worked with his father and set, set a blueprint for us so as we could have successful life as fathers. Not that we wouldn't have hard times or difficult times, but that, that the, this whole thing can come together. And reading in Luke chapter 2, and we find here is Jesus. He's only 12 years old at the time. And he says to his parents, who were looking for him, by the way, which is, was one of my experiences quite a lot of times, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand that statement, statement which he spoke to them. A son about his father's business. Jesus illustrated to us by his life, his day-to-day -day activities, what his father was like. You know, in John chapter 5, verse 19, John chapter 5, and verse 19. Where are we? John chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus says this, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Jesus continually used his Father as a reference to how he was going. In John chapter 14 verse uh, 9... We'll just turn to that. John chapter 14 and verse 9. Jesus said to him, I've been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip. 
this is Philip, one of the disciples, is, is um, asking about the Father. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. You know, many times uh, I've worked in schools now for ooh, maybe nearly 10 years. And, and one of the things that has amazed me is it doesn't matter whether, where Dad is. You know, Dad is always a child's hero unless something has gone drastically wrong. But I remember this time that I was in a corridor and uh, school was just knocking off and uh, all the parents had gathered to, to uh, pick up their kids as they normally do. And this little boy ran out and he said, Hey, everybody, Dad's here. Dad's here. He's just got out of jail and Dad's here. You know, <laughs> in my generation, if that had been my school and, and, and my upbringing, people would have been absolutely horrified. But you know what I realised? the absolute love and admiration of a son for the dad. And you know, you never want to take that joy from a child that has such great love for their dad. And I've seen even, even young men, and, and I'm talking about young men, you know, maybe even 35 to 40, even to 45 their dads have died and you know when you get to work with them closely and get to know them closely you get this you get this echo come up from their hearts i hope dad's pleased with what i'm doing with the property or i hope dad would be pleased with the way i'm looking after the place you know what is it that rings in our hearts that somehow or other Dads do have a special place in your heart. But you know what? One of the things I've found is this. Mums, if you've had disappointing time with, with men or with, with fathers, don't be too disappointed because, you know, if God can't find a man, he'll use a woman. And that, that, that's no down, down slight on women at all. But, you know, in Judges chapter 5, verse 17, we find that the scripture says this, Judges chapter 5, verse 7. Life in the villages had ceased. It ended in Israel until I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel. Life in the villages had ceased. You know, a little bit like life in Melbourne virtually ceased and it took it took a prophetess to rise and to speak the word you know sometimes if a if you can't find a man barack barack he wasn't he he couldn't stand up and speak and so deborah moved up and spoke and you know changed the nation It said a man's job is to provide a home for the family, protect them from whoever or whatever tries to harm the family unit. A mother provides love plus about 10,000 other things. While the father should establish the, the values and the ethics a family will live by. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, let's have a look at that verse. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. We are Ephesians, whoops, it's just here. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admiration, admonition 
of the Lord. You know, sometimes I do see dads that provoke their kids. We, we don't want them to lose heart. It's like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes we expect too much of children. We, How long has it taken us to get to where we are to get ourselves into some sort of orderly life and yet, yet we expect the kid to do it within months and sometimes within hours? And I know we need to be a guide, but we need to be encouraging. We can't, we can't be always on their back until they just lose heart. We don't want to provoke them and find them angry, but we want to encourage them and build them up and draw out. Look for the best things that they do and are. Look at their manners. Look at their life. Look at things that they do well. And then encourage them and draw them out. You know, it means a huge amount when a father who, who lays down the values of a family starts to draw children out to realise that, boy, Dad says I'm doing okay, so I must be doing okay. One thing Western countries leave out from protecting a family is the spiritual side. And I guess you most probably think as a pastor, yeah, of course Steve's going to rave on about that. Sometimes I wish I wasn't a pastor and I wish I was just the normal guy in the street because these things are as important for the normal guy in the street as for the pastor or the Christian. And and sometimes this this thing sort of, we, we slip into that sort of mode. Well, you know, God wants us always to be in his mode. He, he doesn't want us to say, well, that's a part of that and this is a part of this. Well, a part of the reason our country's in the mess that it's in is because we have rejected the spiritual side. Most countries that aren't Christian uh, or Western, uh, would be a better way to put it, uh, are very mindful of the spiritual side. And we're often told and even... Uh, while uh, Victoria's pandemic is raging, it's, it's all about science, experts' advice, etc., etc. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, is verse 19 to 21, is an interesting verse, and uh, I really need to read it out of the King James Bible. Uh, 1 First Timothy, uh, chapter six, verses nineteen. First Timothy, chapter six, and um, this is Paul talking to Timothy, and he says, "O oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust. Guard these are these are strong sort of words, you know, like guard." That nearly sounds like you know maybe there's a few criminals around, maybe there's a few guys around that that uh, will steal what you've got if you're not, if you're not aware. But, but Paul uses these words. Oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust. Avoid the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called science. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Some have lost their faith and got caught up in what we call science and medical information and political information and all these informations forgetting what is behind an epidemic. <coughs> Excuse me. They forget what is behind an epidemic. And a lot of these things cannot necessarily be worked out in a natural way unless you realise what's behind. And so too it's the same thing in your family. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. How many times do we find there's a possibility of something trying to destroy your family and you can't quite put your finger on it? Why? Why is it this way? What's happening here? 
And you know, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. verse 15 for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ yet you do not have many fathers for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel interesting thing that Paul says he says for you have many you have Countless instructors in Christ. You know, even today, there's countless messages that you can watch on the internet. There's, there's countless uh, books that you can read. But Paul goes on to say, but you don't have many fathers. See, when you read a book or you listen to a message or something, you can please yourself. But you know, when you've got a father that's beside you, He's leading you and guiding you and instructing you and warning you about different dangers and different things like that. Past, um, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. That's what the Apostle Paul says. For I became your father. Paul was trying to, to um, guide the Corinthian church as a father. But they had many instructors. They had plenty of people who could get up and preach. Uh, they had plenty of evangelists. They had plenty of um, teachers. They had all those things. But there was nobody that would walk beside them as a father. At one stage, the Apostle Paul said um, he was like a, a, a nursing mother. Boy, that really upsets a lot of people because they, they think we're either male or female. The Apostle Paul was trying to, he, he was trying to express his heart. That it's not just about a message. It's about love for one another. It's about looking after one another. And so, as we're looking at this, we realise that, that in a family, the people are fathered. You know, the difference when it comes to teachers, when it comes to leaders, when it comes to all those things, and now all of a sudden you have a father beside you. Fathers can see. Many, many times I knew when my children were pulling on the eyes over, the wool over my eyes. Many times... It's like God would speak to me and say, those kids need to be home. God, the ultimate father of heaven, will help you see or hear if you'll let him. Remember Gehazi and Elisha. And Gehazi tries to tell Elisha. Elisha says, where have you been, Gehazi? And he says, oh, nowhere. <laughs> that, that's a common answer. What have you been doing? Oh, nothing. Where you been? Oh, nowhere. And Gehazi says, I saw you. I saw you when you received those goods from Naaman. You know, I want to talk now about men in the spirit world. Because, you know, you can father your kids all you like. But if you don't understand the spirit world... You're going to find that sometimes your kids will be stolen from you. Taken from you and you'll, you'll be scratching your head. You'll think, oh, you'll, you'll, matter of fact, you may even feel very condemned because you'll think to yourself, well, how come that happened? I, I gave them a good upbringing. I, I took them to church and da, 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 da. How could that happen? You know, if you don't understand the spirit world, then it's like a part of your Christianity is missing. And so we find in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, a 
And I find it interesting that, that God has put it, or it's in the same chapter that God is talking to parents about bringing up their children. And Ephesians chapter uh, 6 and verse 12 says this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Well, I, I thought it was just that little naughty kid down the road that was leading my kids astray. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Wow. And Paul then says, Therefore, Take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You know, men, we do have a great responsibility to stand up against those invisible powers that would like to try and destroy a family. This is where we as men and women, if you find it necessary, ladies, need to know what it means to have Christ in us. It's certainly not the time for gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Rather, Jesus the victorious. The, Bi the Bible refers to the enemy of man's soul as the strong man, and we can, we can maybe read um, uh, in Luke chapter 11, where Jesus is talking about this. He's, um, he's copping a lot of flack because he's um, just delivered a man from a, a, a heavy bondage uh, Luke chapter 11 and verses Excuse me. Jesus was talking about this. He says, When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, the goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armour in which he trusted and divides his spoil. <laughs> you know, the strong man is the one that's, when a strong man fully armed guards his own palace. You know, the enemy wants to take from us steel, kill and destroy when he guards it when he guards it his goods are in peace or they're safe or he thinks he's got away with it but when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him that's you and me in Christ Jesus Behold, I give you power and authority over all the work of the enemy and shall nothing shall by any means hurt you, the Bible says. The words of Jesus. He says, my words are spirit and life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not natural. They're not natural human things. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This protective stance cannot be taken from somebody that is not confident. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. 
quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I've just got to read that one for us. 4.12 For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Quick and powerful. The Bible says that this is the confidence that we have in him if we ask anything in his name. He hears us. We're encouraged to grow in grace in 2 Peter 3.18. We're to grow in the grace of God. You know, the grace of God is, is the ability of God. It's the power of God. It's the strength of God to keep our families and to see them come into life. The Father's great promise in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. In Hebrews chapter 13, Verse 6. He says this, he says, So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. We can boldly say, As fathers, we can come into the presence of the living God boldly. He says, come, come into my presence. Come in boldly because I'm your helper. I want to help you. I want to see your family succeed. I want to see life flowing from your family. You know, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. You know, sometimes we might have to just say, look, Sorry, God. I know it's Father's Day. I was mainly just thinking in the natural. Well, let's think also in the spiritual. God, you are our Heavenly Father. You are so good. We just bless your holy name today. Father, we pray now. Father, we just thank you in your precious name. Thank you for being so good to us, so loving for us, and giving us the guidelines to live by. Father, at this time, I pray that you open our eyes, that we might see maybe what we haven't seen before. Father, you want us to be men that stand and stand strong. Father, you, are, you want us to be victorious in your presence and in our families. And so, God, I just ask that you come again. Strengthen your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, just on finishing, and... Uh, you may, you may know the state of Victoria. And I'm talking about the mess that it's in because of this COVID. And uh, I've got an apostolic decree. I'm going to pray here this morning. And uh, I will be getting them out to everybody. And I'd like you to pray it every day until we see those principalities and powers, see their, their, their strength broken and uh, see God come into this place and be glorified in the state of Victoria again. And so here's our apostolic decree I'd like to read this morning. We speak to the principalities and powers and the hidden forces of darkness that are keeping our nation in shutdown. We speak to you with one voice and declare that the blood of Jesus is against you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We command every hidden thing in both political parties to be revealed. Every demonic connection and alliance to be made known. Every hidden thing we command you to come into the light and be known. We command the states of Victoria and the nation of Australia to open up. 
We command the businesses to be open. We command the economy to revitalise. We command the churches to come alive and take up their rightful place and open up. Lift up your gates and be lifted up your everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord strong in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up your everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. God bless you.